Well, this video is going to be all about the things the ladies down the road who collect Thomas stuff for me have gathered in the last couple of weeks and have done a fine effort at finding some really unusual items. We'll also have a look at how my Thomas collection has grown and it's certainly far bigger than what this green table can hold and I'll throw in a few surprises along the way and maybe a peek into the shape of things to come. I'm recording the audio live to tape so there's bound to be tons of stuff ups by me along the way and that seems to be normal with every upload I do these days. I think we'll kick off by looking at this very impressive wooden piece up the back. Please tell me if you know anything about the Thomas stuff that I show. Well for me this is a lovely piece it's also a little bit unusual I don't ever remember seeing it for sale in the country where I reside which is Australia. It's got plastic uh, handles and clips it'd be much nicer if these were metal and it's obviously got a track on the outside and let's dive in and open it up and see how it all comes together. The first thing you notice once you open this up is that inside there are these plastic sleeves we can lay your trains in. That would have been much nicer if these were made of wood. So this set is very much like a wooden version of a take and play set. What's nice about this set is what makes it union together are some magnets. And to start playing it's as simple as this. So here's snobby old Spencer and if I give him a push around this has a great feeling on these rails. It really feels nice to play with the wooden trains on this layout. And if you're feeling daring you can go on a cross country excursion and start going around the other way. In my books this little set is brilliant. I like it. It's just so simple and you don't see enough of this sort of set. Now this may come as a complete shock to you but this very simple wood play set impresses me far more than racing down the rails which I looked at in my 7 wooden railway review. Well you guys know what this is all about if you've been watching my videos. And here's a few more of those, what I call checkout Thomases, which landed on me. Well, there's a checkout James. Right next to checkout James are two checkout Edwards. And then we've got a party Thomas. And we've got two Thomases covered with mud splats. And there were quite often a number of variables of Thomas in this series. I don't know how many variables, but I dare say we'll find them all in months to come. Well here we have two Trevor the Traction Engines, he's one of the old guard of the Thomas and Friends range There's a wooden one as we would all know, but the one at the back, this larger one, I don't really know what it is There's no markings underneath, but there is a string on the front, so As usual, the audience will know about this larger Trevor Certainly impressive, it does look like a Tommy, or Tommy, or Tumai, or whatever you say, I say Tommy, you can say whatever you like um, I only say that because of the face and just the general overall feel and finish of it but I may be totally wrong. As always the audience will be correct. And just while I'm on this wooden Trevor look I do love the wear and tear that I get from pre-loved toys but this one's damaged and considering I'm about to go into a whole realm of testing of wooden toys can you recognize that sort of damage with your wooden toys? It's the first one that I've had land here which has this sort of damage around the axle area and your feedback as always is worthwhile than letting me understand what's going on with these toys. Okay come on own up who out there had a little set of Thomas braces. I'll tell you what those ladies they find everything and one of these cameras and something to hold your egg in the morning the camera just does that. I was expecting to hear a Thomas tune but all it does is goes click 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 click. Well here's an unusual piece, well it's unusual to me and I think it's Bertie the Bus my goodness I hope so, I know you're going to correct me if it's not and it's a strange piece because underneath it seems like it's been cut off from something I, I don't know if it's from a shampoo or bubble, um, bubble bath mix 
but it does have on the back there it does say it's a Brit Allcroft Thomas Limited 1999 so maybe people out there have seen one of these nice face on it very simple um, yeah interesting one there would be many of you familiar with these Tomy toys these are all marked 2004 the person in the middle is a little bit old looking he's been in the Sun he's faded a bit and he's also a little bit different because he's made in a different country other than those two Thomases sitting beside him and when I have a look underneath there's a country of origin Vietnam as far as I know it's the first Vietnam piece that I've picked up which also has Tommy attached as the maker and when inspecting under the Thomases we quite clearly see made in China as a country of origin so it has me thinking is this Percy an imposter or is this normal to see Tommy stuff made in Vietnam and for anyone who owned one of these, you certainly know that a fantastic motorized function in them. Now the ladies down the road had found me a second one of these Thomases and some of you did ask a question about this one when I saw it in my first collection video. It's quite an interesting Thomas because it's got this at the back and because I've got two I can blow into the other one and it makes a sound like this. <laughs> This one's in far better condition and seems like it hasn't been left out in the sun but from this one I'll be able to get details and hopefully restore the other one. Well here's James and Thomas and I'll be honest here these look like fairly recent toys. The James here is a pullback one and the Thomas one is interesting it has some sort of Play-Doh stamper underneath there and if I spin them around you'll see them in their full glory and look that James looks basically untouched. You gotta wonder how do these toys end up in the charity shops. There's a closer shot of Thomas and he looks like he's in pristine condition as well. Now that's a chubby faced Thomas, I don't know what he's been munching out on, but he's a fatty. He's actually looking down, so I wonder what that's implying. Is he watching what you're doing or I certainly know he's not racing down the rails. Well of course here we have James and for those of you who have very eagle eyes and know your Thomas toys, you'll know that it's one of these with the rollers underneath and for those of you who know my videos you'll also know that I've got a Thomas and Percy which have rollers underneath but there's a difference the Thomas and Percy have their eyes cast downwards looking down at something whereas James here his eyes are set looking straight ahead so this has me really asking what is the origin of this James with rollers from what I can see the roller sets are equal on all three models I think we all enjoy finding out the facts of the very expansive Thomas and Friends franchise. There was a small Golden Bear Gordon and a much larger Golden Bear Edward. And Edward's got a few features that my other Golden Bears don't have. He's also a bit of a chatterbox. And if you're curious about years of toys like I am, the Gordon was 1996 and the Edward with a sound chip was 2006. Well next up are two well loved Ertl toys and there's Dodge in the background there and Thomas up front. And we'll spin them around and have a bit of a look. Quite like Dodge, he's got a classic face on him. How could you resist a face like that? I'm pretty sure most of you would agree that Ertl produced some of the best looking Thomas and Friends characters that are in people's collections. It's very difficult to find these Ertl toys these days so any that drop my way I'm very appreciative of. I wonder what Dodge is saying. This is probably one of the best little Thomases the ladies down the road have found for me and it's a Tommy Thomas. Well there's the Tommy brand animated in China and there's the licensing info and the year 2002 for its tiny size it's got heaps of detail and the funny thing is I've seen one of these before recently but the person put it up as a quiz to what sort of Thomas it was and made a relationship to a Pez Thomas let's have a look at a Pez against this one well there's a Pez Thomas next to this Tommy Thomas 
and I'm telling you it makes the Pez Thomas look large and we already know that Pez Thomas is actually very small but this Tommy Thomas is a beautiful little thing and I wonder if there are any other characters of this same style as a collector of Thomas's when I see little ones like this turn up they actually give me the greatest amount of joy those ladies down the road found me a plush 2003 Harold the helicopter and lo and behold many of you would know this set they found me a boulder set but there's a few things missing from it now because of the mini me contest I had to do some uh, research into the boulder set and story and I found it on this DVD that I've got and there's the episode there it's called Rusty in the Boulder and I believe it's one of the best episodes uh, in that earlier part of the Thomas franchise and from the strength of the episode there's been quite a few toys and play sets based around this episode so here's the bold set made up it's a 2004 marked set it's missing Grandmaster Boulder I've got a feeling the set came with Percy and not Thomas it's actually a very clever set with lots of little features in it and what's interesting about it, it uses a magnet here to restrain uh, the engine before it goes rolling down the hill and if I turn it if I turn the set around there's an activation switch inside here which releases boulder and also oops also the train now it came with this little wheelbarrow but I've got a funny feeling that's a ring in on the ramp down from what I can see from the mini me contest entry there should be some sort of water tank here that's missing and very sadly it's missing one of the radiuses of the track now I might pull a video to show how to fix this set to make a radius up and by basically replicating one that I've got there but I've got to be very careful because I can't show how to duplicate licensed toys maybe the workaround would be to show how to fix a toy which is missing a part to show the play features of the set I've made a very rudimentary gaffer tape boulder and there's the resting spot right there so here I go, I'm going to release Gaffer Tape Boulder. Slow motion replay! Well that's the play action of this very excellent set and I think my boulder is a bit small because as it comes down here I think it's meant to knock the shed down as it does in the episode. I really feel this is a worthwhile set to fix up and repair because it's such a great set to play with. I'll just have to craft a much better boulder because I feel my gaffer tape one just doesn't cut it. If you ever see this set for sale anywhere I certainly highly recommend it, it's a fantastic play set. Well now for a bit of a brain teaser for all you Thomas fans I've got two grand engines here, one being Bell and the other one being the long lost and forgotten duck which one do you think is going to be heavier? The scales are back to zero first up, the honourable duck 117 grams now the much larger Bell 93 grams that can't be right, let me go back to duck 117 93 what's going on? and for another weight challenge I've got the honourable small diesel dart and the narrow gauge engine Duncan which one do you feel is the heaviest? they're about the same size go back to zero first up with dart I've got 54 grams now Duncan 74 grams so how about that for a little brain teaser I wasn't putting any lead in any of the models you're seeing the weights that they are as they naturally occur the shape of things to come in the shape of things to come I've got a follow up to my Thomas dark side I've found a new collection of strange obscure knockoff Thomases there is one which is so grotesque so uneasy on the eyes and so alarming that I dare not show it to you in this video before this one comes out of its box I'm going to have to do a full warning to all viewers 
as it's going to shock you and possibly leave you marked for life. It will be a video that I'm sure many of you will love to hate. The Thomas Dark Side is like the little shop of horrors of Thomas and Friends toys. Thomas Collection update! Well here's my Thomas Collection as it stands in 2011 and we're tracking along these are all of the real McCoy Thomas's the licensed ones which I've collected much of these have come from the ladies down the road thank you very much for your support and we'll come across and in that sea of black then we start to see the dark side the knockoffs and what is surprising a lot of those knockoffs are actually a little bit hard to tell from the real Thomas products and here are the real McCoy Thomases. It's a beautiful sea of red, black and blue. And for some people, this would be giving them much, much joy. And I've got to say, when you line them up like this, it's a very impressive army of guys to have. I'll probably let a year pass by before I show my collection again. And I'll probably have a much bigger collection, I hope. It really all depends on how busy the little shop is down the road. And I've got to say, they've done an excellent job at finding Thomas's for me. I have shown them my collection so to show them that their fruits of their labour had not gone in vain. Just about looking at the knockoff Thomas's and I'm wondering which one of these is the shocker. Which one is the most frightful here? I was going to say that little one initially but then that, that horrifying disco Thomas that uh, came from Vietnam I think that's the killer for me. Well on the side of the real Thomas's it's interesting because a lot of these toys are distorted from what you see in the TV series but there's one to me which just doesn't fit in now as I stand here looking down on all of these years of Thomas glory the one I'm going to choose as being the the one which doesn't quite fit in the, the odd Thomas out and it's one that's a choice that's going to upset a lot of people unfortunately to me that Hornby Thomas seems like the odd Thomas out in this collection strangely enough it's next to the Mega Bloks Thomas, which is one that I've already denounced as being one of the most strange Thomases that I've got. Now I brought up the Hornby Thomas because when you look down on all the Thomases here, the Hornby Thomas sticks out as this great big long streak of misery. It just stands out for the reasons of that doesn't it doesn't seem to be the right shape. And I know there's gonna be some people who are gonna be mighty angry at me for saying that. They just go on forever and ever. You may wonder why you're staring at this camouflage piece of cloth, but I'm going to reveal one of the mystery prizes in the Mini Me contest. And remember, this is just one of the mystery prizes. This is not connected to the top three prizes. Well, let's pull this rather strange curtain away and let's reveal one of the very special prizes that I'm pulling together. And I'm still after a few more prizes to add to this single prize. As you can see it's a collection of Tobys. There's a Trackmaster Toby, there's a Buckman Toby and also a Henrietta. There's a Mega Bloks Toby and interestingly enough I think they've got it right. Mega Bloks have done a great block shape for Toby. Well done Mega Bloks. I was very critical of their Thomas. There was a very very hard to find mint in box Ertl Toby with Henrietta. That is, I feel, the jewel in this prize. There's also this one, Toby and Flora. And there's this one, a metallic take-along Toby. So I'm pretty sure that this is an awesome prize. And it's, it's, it's going to be picked as a random prize to someone who entered the contest because the contest is totally out of control. And I've said that many times over. And there'll be the top prizes and then there'll be a bunch of randomly picked prizes but your entry must conform to what I've asked in the competition rules sadly many of the entries don't so I'm going to have to be very careful with who gets these prizes well that's one of the mystery prizes revealed I hope you like it the top secret collection well there's another collection that I've got that I'm going to endeavour to bring to YouTube and it's going to take a long time to make the video because I want to be quite in depth in this inspection of the collection. I'm wondering how many younger folk know of this series or what these models are. I know people my age would know, but how about you young guys? 
there's one there's one child that goes to school with my daughter and he brought in a Thunderbird 3 and I was actually quite surprised to see a six-year-old with a Thunderbird 3 and he knew all about the series in fact he had excellent knowledge of the series and I'm pretty sure my collection is going to be an eye-opener for some Thunderbirds fans and it's a collection that I really really enjoy having I'm very proud of my Thunderbirds collection I'd hate to think how much money I poured into buying all these toys but they give me joy and that's about all it's about hope you enjoyed this insight into my ever-growing Thomas collection bye for now